Hello, we're now going to go through five different risks to information. The five are kind of categories of these risks. Within them, there are specific particular risks, some of which we're going to go into in future videos, some of which we have maybe talked about already to an extent. So first of all, what is meant by risks? Well, it's a word we use, not day to day maybe, but it's outside of just IT. Um, so risks are all about how bad events that could happen might be. Maybe a slightly confusing definition there. So a risk is something which could happen. A risk hasn't necessarily happened yet, right? If a burglar broke into my house last night, that's no longer a risk because it's happened. Whereas right now, when I haven't had a burglar in my house, there's, there is a risk, hopefully a small risk, that a burglar could break in to my house, right? A risk hasn't happened yet, but could. And in particular in IT, and in particular in information security, we're thinking about how bad these are going to be. And so something which is high risk usually has two components within it, right? So usually it has a high likelihood, which means it's quite possibly going to happen. And there may be an attempt to actually give a percentage to it sometimes. And also there might be high impact. So when it does happen, it could be really bad. Now, to be honest, for something to be high risk, usually both of these have got to be true. But equally, it could be so bad that despite being really rare, it's considered high risk. Now, not something we're going to go into now, but down the line, if you've got a job working in information security, a lot of your role might be making uh, colourful diagrams like this. This is called a risk matrix and is a way of just giving a, a, giving a number to risks, essentially, right? So if a if something was considered tolerable, so not a big deal, and it was considered probable, that might be kind of a medium risk. Whereas if it was intolerable, it could result in disasters, and risk is definitely going to occur, that is gonna be in red. So I don't know what that would be in a particular scenario. It could be maybe a hacking attack on quite a high value target. You might feel that that's inevitable, someone's gonna try and hack you, and it would be disastrous if it did, you might consider hacking to be high risk. Whereas, if you live in, say, the UK, something like a flood might be very improbable if you're on high land, say, if you're on a hill, but it might have quite a bad effect, and so you might still consider it to be medium risk, say. So anyway, there's a way of quantifying how bad things are going to be. What you'll do for the ones which are high risk and medium risk maybe, you'll put in protection measures in place to try and reduce the risks. So in an ideal world, you'd identify something like hacking as high risk and think of a way to bring that risk down so that it's much more acceptable. And we'll look at a whole bunch of different protection measures in the next few videos. So that's what risks are, things which could happen and are generally quite bad. So let's go through these five categories then. So the first one is unauthorized access to data. This will include hacking. So hacking is when an attacker will access systems without permission. So usually they'll go through some back door, they'll find a way around the normal access and potentially steal information. Now, there is some type of hacking which is legal if you have got permission, but if it's unauthorized, that means you're not allowed to do it. So this is definitely the illegal kind of hacking. Now it's only accessing. Accessing in this context just means viewing. And of course they can see what's there. They're not necessarily doing anything to the data in this particular risk. Now another word you might come across which is connected but a little bit different is espionage. So espionage is longer term spying. So one hacking attack might not really be espionage. But if a hacker is breaking in every day or really often to try and look at the secrets the company has, that might be called espionage and might go a little bit further than just hacking. So hacking is definitely deliberate. You can't accidentally stumble in and hack. It's a very active thing you're doing. It's a choice you're making. Whereas the next two risks are unlikely to be deliberate or totally deliberate. So the first one is unintended access to data. Again, about viewing data, not about necessarily changing it. So this is often where a mistake or just a lack of knowledge will lead to somebody accessing information they shouldn't have access to. So a good example of a mistake is somebody leaving a bag on a train. They might have their work laptop in it. 
it might not have a password and so and, and someone who picks it up can look at the data right that's a mistake not a great thing to be doing but it's not a deliberate thing an example of lack of knowledge causing unintended access to data might be for example a technician not really knowing how the systems work and so not setting the access levels properly maybe they set the most recent apprentice to the same access level as the CEO because they don't really understand what they're doing. And so that might mean the apprentice can access information which they shouldn't have access to. So this is not always malicious, it can be just mistakes. Another risk which comes from mistakes, comes from accidents, is accidental loss of data. Now the difference between access and loss is access, you're just viewing it, loss is where the data goes and you can't get it back. So this is where either a mistake from a human or it can also be just a failure of some equipment means the information can't be accessed again. I'll just fix that typo. Now, when I say equipment failure, this is most commonly going to be a storage device. So if you've got something like a hard drive, which is what this is, it's got a disk which is spinning really fast. Lots of things are moving inside it. If a read write head is moving, Often after a few years, these just start to fail. You might one day turn on your computer and the read-write head has stopped working. The disk can't spin anymore. There's been some damage and your data might be lost. It's why having a backup is so important. You don't want to lose stuff just because you haven't bothered to make a backup. The last two risks you need to be aware of are four and five here. So four is intentional destruction of data. We're going back to the risks caused by deliberate actions here. So intentional means somebody has deliberately done this. And the first risk about hacking was another example of intentional maliciousness. So this first one is where the attacker somehow tries to destroy, tries to lose the data. So this could be through malware, like a virus, which spreads and deletes the data on the computer. It could also be a much more basic and crude method of somebody coming in and smashing up computers destroying storage devices to try and lose the data. Well, why would an attacker want to do this? Well, often they're trying to make things harder for the organization to operate. They might have something against the organization and so want to make it harder for them and want to damage them. Again, backups are a simple way to try and avoid this or reduce the risk. The last risk to go through today is intentional tampering of data. So tampering is about changing it. So going in, hacking in often and modifying the data. So not just viewing it, but actually trying to change it, usually of course to benefit the attacker. So for example, you might have an attacker hacking in to a bank, for example, to fraudulently change the bank balances, maybe to boost up their bank balance to make them more money. So being fraudulent is where you're doing it, uh, where you're faking who you are, you're doing it without permission, essentially, right? Now out of our three principles, tampering affects integrity most. So the integrity is knowing the data is correct essentially. Whereas for example, destruction is much more about uh, affecting the availability of the data. So use those three words, confidentiality, integrity, availability, when you're thinking about these risks and which principle they might be targeting.